Buffalo graze. They're not like cattle to where they stay in one place and eat the grass down then move. Buffalo basically are what you call browsers. They eat and move all day long and the way they graze, they leave short grasses, tall grasses, medium-sized grasses, which different bird species need for camouflage or nesting or be able to see their predators. Despite the best efforts of the tribes, despite the patient work of Robbie and his staff, no new animals have arrived since 2014. The quarantine pastures are empty. Officials at Yellowstone National Park continue to support the transfer of live animals to Fort Peck. When the Park Service asked for public comment on the idea, they received several thousand comments. 90% supported the idea of transferring Yellowstone buffalo to the tribes. But against all scientific evidence that quarantine works and that the tribe's facilities are secure, the cattle industry in Montana continues to oppose any compromise. Robbie Magnan stands his lonely vigil. Neighboring tribes, including my own at Fort Belknap, wait to grow our herds with Yellowstone buffalo and perfectly healthy buffalo who escape Yellowstone in winter continue to be rounded up and shipped to butcher. When they were without food uh, and they were getting pretty hungry, the people were needing food and uh, they were getting pretty worried. And myself, I, I, I assume, I just assume that it was within the area that we now call Buffalo Lake. That's where the buffalo roamed. And this one particular time, they couldn't find them. They didn't know where they went. Without food, they're going to starve. The buffalo had been long gone from Blackfeet country when Earl Olperson began to sing the Buffalo Stone Song. But he listened to the elders. And the elders taught him the language and the ceremonies and the song that told the story of how the people survived a time of hunger with the help of the buffalo. This one day, this one individual was walking around uh, within the area where they were camped. Pretty soon he, he heard a song, somebody singing. And of course, it could have been coming from anywhere or by someone. But he was trying to find who is singing. Then he heard the words in the song that uh, the stone saying, Go there, described an area. There you will find the buffalo. And finally, he come up on a little stone. And that's where that song was coming from. And they did go where they were told. And they did find a buff. They come up on them. And that gave them that, their survival. That's the Buffalo Stone song. As the years passed, the soul of the song took on a new meaning. In 2008, the Blackfeet tribe began its Buffalo Initiative, a master plan to bring the buffalo back to the reservation. They set out systematically to purchase large ranches that had been lost to non-tribal members in the 20th century. They slowly built the herd to 200, then 300 buffalo. Well, this ranch is like 24th, I believe it's like 24,000 acres. and. The biggest part of it though is just as, as many things that tribal people have lost, we've lost a lot of our lands within, within our territory that were because of the Allotment Act. And so we're, the tribe is eventually just buying back all the lands that, that have had, fallen into uh, non-tribal member hands. There's a lot of potential here, there's a lot of land here 
First and foremost, we, we bring these animals back for our cultural connection, our spiritual connection. And then we feed a lot of people. We have feed our diabetics. We're trying to get it in the school programs. And we take care of all of our ceremonial people that they have requests. On the other hand, too, we're trying to start a, um, an economic base for the tribe. And then that these animals can take care of us in this new, new day and age, just as they did um, in a different way, but they took care of us in our past and, and they can do it again. reason for this why you are here. There's a reason why we got this land back because the buffalo was coming back here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the autumn of 2014, traditional leaders from the bands of the Blackfeet Federation and their neighbors gathered at the foot of Chief Mountain in northwestern Montana to sign a unique and remarkable treaty that committed their tribes to restoring buffalo on both sides of the international border. <laughs> Irvin Carlson represented ITBC. I signed on behalf of the Grovon and Assiniboine at Fort Belknap. Robbie Magnin was there along with a dozen other ITBC leaders and activists. Officials from national parks on both sides of the border were there. Native scholars and leaders of the international environmental movement. The idea of the treaty was audaciously simple. Treat the buffalo herds like migrating wildlife to eliminate artificial human borders. Encourage the tribes to work together. Encourage parks on both sides of the border to share technical knowledge. Use 21st century wildlife and land management practices to restore buffalo to the land and weave back together the ancient ecosystems that supported both the wildlife and the people. In 2016, the Blackfeet tribe purchased 88 calves from Elk Island National Park in Canada. On the surface, it was a symbolic affirmation of the spirit of the treaty. The tribe in Montana working with a park in Canada to strengthen the genetic diversity of the Blackfeet herd. But it quickly became apparent that the exchange had deeper historical meanings. So then we find out that these animals are, are animals that were captured here as calves in uh, the late 1800s. So we made a deal to get these surplus animals, but we found out that that was the story behind these animals. They originated, this was their, their homeland right here at Blackfeet. So after we made that deal to bring those animals, it became very important to us because this is where they came from. Those animals that were captured as calves here, they were making a big circle is what they are doing. They're coming back home. They made a full circle and um, now they're back home. And then they'll be here for our future generations. The Blackfeet are not alone in their efforts to blend an ancient relationship with 21st century wildlife management to transform the land. In the Book Cliffs of Utah, the Ute tribe is working with state park officials to release a free roaming herd of buffalo into public lands. In southeastern Montana, the Crow Nation supports a free roaming herd of over 2,000 buffalo in the inaccessible plateaus of the Bighorn Mountains. And in the Black Hills of South Dakota, Lakota tribes have purchased sacred land at the center of the hills 
and restored a small herd of buffalo to Peshla. In 25 years, tribal strategies have spread like a spider's web across the landscape of the American West. There are as many innovative approaches to buffalo restoration as there are member tribes of ITBC. Herd managers are more experienced, facilities are more sophisticated, relations with state and national governments are based more on trust and respect than suspicion. Whole ecosystems are in transition and old boundaries are being crossed in ways that were unimaginable 25 years ago. But the core value of the first generation is still at the heart of ITBC. Bring Buffalo back to Indian country and the people will prosper. <laughs>